So I want to share with you my 80k pure fiction run using E0 S0 Acheron in the first half and E0 Blade and E0 Steely on the bottom half. And there's a few things that I want to share with this. One is that Acheron is completely busted OP. And then two, Blade and Seelie are getting too much disrespect by the HSR community. They are still, in my opinion, incredible units to own. Okay, so here I save my Pella ult until after Ran Mei, just so that Pella also gets the damage buff. And then I'm going to use my Acheron ult here to get rid of the two elites. No, her to ult to get rid of the next wave of enemies. So this team is really synergistic because everyone works together. Pella is an AoE defense shredder, so both Herta and Akron will benefit from her. And then Ren Mei is a team-wide uh, team harmony buffer, so Akron, Pella, and Herta will all benefit from her damage buffs. So I'm going to use Pella ult here to kill off some mobs so that a Trotter can spawn in. This way my Akron ult can one-shot the Trotter, otherwise it'll take quite a bit of hits to kill, it, to kill the Trotter. Okay, and then this should be the final wave of enemies before Trapard spawns, so I'm just going to use my Herta ult. Okay, so we've cleaned out all the mobs. Now it's time for Trapard's fight. I'm going to start with Pella ultimate to defense down everyone. And then I'm going to use Pella's skill on the far right mob to drop it below 50% HP so that Herta can do a follow-up attack. I'm just using Ranmei's skill here to get her ult back up faster. Herta's going to auto-attack for a debuff because every time you freeze an enemy, it counts as a debuff. And then I'm going to get rid of the low HP mobs so that Akron's ult can, can attack full health enemies. Because you don't... Akron does so much damage that it sucks when she overkills them. So if you can, bring in full health enemies first, because she'll one-shot them regardless. So I'm going to use Ren Mei's ultimate here again before Pella's ultimate, just because I want all the damage I can possible, and Pella's ultimate actually deals quite a bit of damage. Here I'm using Ranmei's auto attack to break and freeze the mob for another stack for Acheron. And then this should give me two stacks for Acheron because one is from the skill and one is from breaking Japard. Now that I got rid of the soldier elite, Acheron should be able to get super buffed damage here. And yeah, 1.3 million damage with over two turns remaining. Okay, this half is a lot sweatier because I had to do a couple of retries. Blade has to get hit here, just because that would allow me to one-shot the entire wave. So I just had to reset until Blade got hit. And also, I can't have Blade get hit and stunned, so he has to get hit and not get CC'd. Because here, his follow-up attack will one-shot the entire wave. And then I'll ult with him. This should kill the robot on the on the left and then the remaining enemy should be able to die just from Celie's skill and resurgence so I'm just gonna buff her to make sure nothing funny happens and I can guarantee these kills yeah so this robot should take out the two mobs beside it and then Celie should be able to defeat this elite Okay, and here I'm set up perfectly for another blade follow-up attack, so it should be able to wipe out most of this wave. Yeah, and then Seely is going to kill off some mobs for us. I'm focusing down the mobs I'm sure I can kill, just so that I can get resurgence. So the reason why I feel like Blade and Celie get disrespected is because Blade, for me, is one of the most 
flexible DPS units. You can easily pair him with any other unit just because of how skill point neutral he is. And then for Steely, I just think she's viable in almost every game mode. The only problem with Steely is you really want to make sure you have as much crit rate as possible because it sucks when you don't crit and then you don't get your resurgence off. And so my Steely here I think is at 93% crit rate, but even then I don't think that's good enough. I want it to be as close to 100% crit rate as possible. And also because her ultimate is only one instance of damage. So if you don't crit it, you're losing so much damage. We're on our last mob. And I think I'm what I'm going to do is have Blade auto attack it and get the fifth stack so that we can start the final wave with his follow up attack. Yeah. And then here I just want to make sure the second elite that spawns in spawns next to this first elite because Blade does splash damage. And so the only way I can target both of them is if they're side by side. If they're on either side of Kokolia, then I'm stuck hitting Kokolia. The middle boss is extra tanky while there's still enemies on the field. Once they're alone, then that's when they become super vulnerable. So avoid hitting Kokolia until you've killed everyone around her. So that's why right now my focus is on trying to make sure the elites spawn together and so that I can hit them at the same time. Yeah, so now that the second elite has spawned beside the first one, I can start uh, cleaning up the second side to spawn in the third elite. And then here with Blade, I'm going to start hitting the two that are side by side. Now, Kokolia frees Blade, which is fine, because I'm going to use Branya to unfreeze him anyways. And I'm just using Seelie to clean up the trash mobs, and there the third elite has spawned. Here I was debating who to use Sparkle skill on, but I think I want Blade to be buffed because he's going to launch his follow-up attack. And then I'm using Branya's buff after Blade casts his skill, just because... It will make the buff last an extra turn. So now we should be nearing the the end of the mob spawning. I'm just going to use Seelie to clean out these mobs. And here I actually don't have a lot of skill points, so I'm only going to use a Seelie auto attack and since I can't kill anyone with the auto attack I'm just going to hit the elite to shave down his HP. I am lucky that Blade got hit here because now Blade can get an get a follow-up attack off. Okay and now we're down to the final wave of enemies so there's only three enemies left. And so I should be able to clear this off pretty easily. Blade's ultimate should be able to kill the elite here, but unfortunately it lives with a sliver of HP, and so we have to target Kokolia here instead of the the mob. And then here we get screwed because Seelie gets frozen. So I was debating what to do here, and I think I have to bring up Branya and have Branya unfreeze Seelie. If Seelie wasn't frozen, I could bring up Blade and like guarantee guarantee I have enough damage to kill, but unfortunately since Seelie got frozen, I have to dispel her. But luckily, Seelie's skill can kill off the mob, enter her resurgence, then let her do a fat ultimate, and then the skill should be able to kill off Kokolia. So that was my ADK clear run. Um, I hope I did a good job showcasing 
the potential for Blade and Sealy. Two units that people say have fallen off, but I don't I don't agree with them. I think they're still just as viable as they were when they released. I'm going to show you my character builds. Akron is nothing too crazy. She's not bad, but she's rocking good night sleep well. Her talents aren't all leveled yet. And while some of my pieces are good, you can see that my planar ornaments, they're pretty bad. This one here has so much HP rolls. <laughs> she's E0. Pella has a level 70 weapon and her talents are nowhere near maxed out. But she is E6. Herta, I think, is decently built. She is using a two piece, two piece, and she's also E6. Ranmei is my most broken character on my account. She's E1 S1, so I know it's not super relatable, but I did skip a bunch of banners to get her to E1. I think it's worth it. Branya is also E1 S1, but my first Branya was from the 50 Beginner Wishes, and then my second Branya was from the 300 character pick. Blade is my best built character. He's effectively at 100% crit rate. And I have some pretty cracked pieces on him. And Blade is E0. Sparkle is E0, S0 on a dance, 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 and she's just built to be as fast as possible, so she's on a rainbow set. Celi is E0, S1. I just built her with as much crit as possible because it feels so bad when your Celi doesn't crit. My only problem with Celi is that when she doesn't crit, it feels really bad. Just because her whole kit revolves around killing enemies, and if she doesn't crit and doesn't kill, then you lose half of her kit. 